Charles Darwin stood on these islands in 1833, staring at something that made no sense. Rivers of stone stretching for miles, with no water in sight. He couldn't explain them, neither could the scientists who came after him. Nearly 200 years later, we're still debating what created them, but that's just the beginning. These islands had a secret so bizarre that when geologists first discovered it, they thought they'd made a mistake. The rocks told an implausible story, a journey that should never have happened a rotation that defied belief, and beneath these windswept grasslands where nothing tall can survive, they found proof of something that vanished millions of years ago. The Falkland Islands aren't what they seem, so in this video we walk through 15 geography facts that explain the conditions that make the Falklands one of the most distinctive territories in the South Atlantic. Long before the Falkland Islands settled near South America, they formed part of a landmass that sat close to present-day South Africa. Their story goes back hundreds of millions of years, to a time when Earth's continents were joined in a giant supercontinent called Gondwana. As this huge landmass began to pull apart, sections drifted in different directions, and the block that would one day become the Falklands slowly broke away. During that vast tectonic journey, geologists believe the crust block carrying the Falklands may have undergone a large rotation. Model reconstruction suggests as much as 180 degrees. That conclusion comes from detailed comparisons of the island's bedrock with ancient formations in South Africa's Cape Fold Belt, indicating they once shared the same geological foundation. When people say Falkland Islands, they're drastically understating things. The archipelago contains 778 islands, spanning roughly 12,173 square kilometers. East Falkland and West Falkland make up 91% of the total land area, but hundreds of smaller islands scatter across the surrounding waters. Only a small number of the islands are inhabited, while the majority remain wild and largely untouched. The rest remain pristine wildlife havens where nature operates undisturbed. Some outer islands, like Weddell Island, are large, others are tiny islets, barely rising above sea level. These smaller islands serve as critical breeding grounds for millions of seabirds and marine mammals. The Falklands feel incredibly open because around 3,500 people share more than 12,000 square kilometers of land creating a population density of approximately 0.3 people per square kilometer. This makes the territory one of the emptiest places on Earth in terms of settlement. Most residents live in Stanley, the capital, which holds around three quarters of the population. Once you leave Stanley, the sense of space grows quickly, with large sheep farms and small outlying communities spread far apart. Daily life in these remote areas can feel very quiet, as it is possible to go days without meeting anyone outside your household. Some farms can be reached only by rough tracks or light aircraft, and neighbors may live 30 kilometers away, creating a lifestyle shaped by distance, self-reliance, and close ties within small groups. The Falklands have no native trees, creating an unusual treeless landscape dominated by grasses and low shrubs. The combination of extreme winds and nutrient-poor peat soils prevents trees from establishing. Recent research uncovered a buried forest bed near Stanley. Fossil pollen, spores, and wood fragments show that during the mid to late Cenozoic, the Falklands supported a cool, wet forest, likely dominated by southern beech and podocarps. Today, the islands are treeless again. Strong westerly winds, acidic peat soils, and salty sea spray prevent saplings from surviving. Any planting now requires artificial windbreaks and constant protection. The islands now showcase how dramatically landscapes can transform when climate crosses hidden thresholds. Peatlands cover roughly 40 to 50% of the Falkland Islands, one of the highest proportions anywhere in the world. These peat soils store an estimated 156 million tons of carbon, acting as a major long-term carbon sink. They formed over thousands of years as hardy, slow-decaying grasses accumulated in cold, waterlogged conditions. Some peat deposits reach several meters deep, with the oldest layers dating back around 16,500 years. The system is extremely sensitive. Warming temperatures and drier conditions linked to climate change could destabilize the peat and release the carbon it has locked away. The Falklands host all five of the region's breeding penguin species, Gentoo, King, Magellanic, Rockhopper, and Macaroni. Their colonies number in the hundreds of thousands, making the archipelago one of the richest penguin breeding zones in the Southern Ocean. The islands are home to roughly one third of the world's Gentoo penguin population. At Volunteer Point, you'll find over 1,000 king penguins in a single colony. The Rockhopper colonies, once massive, declined by 90% following commercial fishing establishments, but have stabilized. Magellanic penguins nest in two-meter-deep burrows dug into the peat. These populations make the Falklands one of the premier penguin-watching destinations globally. The Falkland Islands host the largest breeding population of black-browed albatross on Earth, accounting for up to 80% of the global population. These magnificent seabirds, with wingspans reaching 2.4 meters, nest on cliffside colonies throughout the archipelago. 
West Point Island alone supports around 2,000 breeding pairs. The birds spend most of their lives gliding over the Southern Ocean but return to the same nesting sites year after year. They mate for life and some albatrosses can live over 60 years, possibly approaching 70 in rare cases. The island's location in food-rich waters and lack of terrestrial predators create ideal conditions for these albatross populations to thrive. The Falklands sits in the Roaring Forties, a belt of powerful westerly winds between 40 and 50 degrees south latitude. Westerly winds average around 31 km per hour in Stanley, but storms are frequent, with winds regularly hitting 90 km per hour or more. These relentless winds have shaped the island's ecology, preventing tree growth and forcing vegetation to grow low and dense. The wind-adapted flora produces leaves with thick, fibrous layers, highly resistant to decay. Buildings must be constructed to withstand these conditions, and residents plan activities around wind forecasts. The wind is so constant that calm days feel unnaturally quiet. Without trees, tussock grass serves as the Falklands forest, growing up to 3 meters tall with individual pedestals reaching 1.5 meters in diameter. This remarkable grass, Poa flabellata, forms dense grasslands that provide vital shelter for wildlife. 30 species of birds nest within tussock grass, along with sea lions and elephant seals seeking protection from the wind. Once more widespread, its distribution has shrunk due to grazing and land use changes, but it still persists, especially on offshore islands where livestock are absent, where it continues to form critical habitat. The Falklands feature one of Earth's most unusual geological phenomena, stone runs, vast rivers of boulders stretching several kilometers. These quartzite boulder streams puzzled Charles Darwin when he visited in 1833. The largest Prince's Street stone run measures 4 kilometers long and 400 meters wide. These aren't jumbled piles, but organized streams of angular rocks ranging from fist size to blocks weighing hundreds of tons. Scientists debate their origin, with recent research suggesting they formed through complex processes over millions of years, not just during ice ages. The highest point in the Falklands, Mount Usborne on East Falkland, reaches just 705 meters above sea level, which is still modest compared to many mountain ranges worldwide. Yet this modest elevation feels significant in the flat, treeless landscape. The mountain sits within the Wickham Heights Range, which runs east-west across the northern part of East Falkland. Mount Adam on West Falkland reaches 700 meters, nearly matching Usborne. These hills experience different weather from the lowlands, often shrouded in fog and mist. The quartzite rock forming these peaks resists erosion, creating the island's most rugged terrain. The Falklands have a remarkably stable climate where temperatures never get very hot or very cold. Mean annual temperature hovers around 5 degrees Celsius. Typical summer days may reach the low 20 degrees Celsius and occasional winter nights can dip near freezing. This narrow temperature band results from the surrounding ocean's moderating influence. Annual rainfall averages about 600 to 650 millimeters, quite low for such a maritime environment. The eastern islands generally receive more rain than western areas due to the prevailing westerlies. Snow falls sometimes but rarely lingers. Strong winds and salt-laden air dominate the weather. This cool, windy climate creates conditions unique to the islands. The Falklands occupy a strategic position in the South Atlantic, sitting approximately 500 meters east of Patagonia's coast and about 1,200 kilometers from Antarctica's northern tip. This places them closer to South America than to Antarctica. Despite their sub-Antarctic wildlife, the islands sit at roughly 52 degrees south latitude, the same latitude as London sits north. Their position on the Patagonian Shelf, one of the world's widest continental shelves, gives them rich fishing grounds. The shelf extends 760 kilometers into the Atlantic before dropping to ocean depths. This location makes the islands a natural gateway for Antarctic expeditions. Beyond the famous penguins, the Falklands attract over 200 bird species, including migratory visitors and resident populations. Three endemic species call the islands home. Corpus wren, the Falklands steamer duck, and the tussock bird. The islands also support enormous seabird colonies, including southern giant petrels, straight to caracaras, and around 60 to 65 breeding bird species overall. During spring and summer, migratory birds arrive from South America and Antarctica. The lack of predatory mammals allows ground nesting birds to thrive. Bird watchers consider the Falklands a world class destination because of the easy access to diverse species in dramatic coastal settings. The Falklands had only one native land mammal the Falkland Islands wolf, or warra. This fox-like canid, slightly larger than a red fox, became extinct in the mid-19th century, making it the first known canid to disappear in historical times. Early settlers hunted it to protect livestock, despite the animal being remarkably tame and curious around humans. How this canid reached the isolated islands remains a mystery, as it arrived before humans and couldn't swim the distance from South America. 
Today, no land mammals are indigenous to the Falklands. Introduced species like sheep, cattle, and rats now fill those ecological niches. From rotating nearly 180 degrees across the ocean to sheltering a third of the world's gentoo penguins, the Falkland Islands prove that even the most remote places can hold unbelievable secrets. Which fact would you never have guessed? And what remote places should I cover next? Leave your ideas below. If you enjoyed this one, hit subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and brings you more stories like this.